Amy Hoggart, Claire Fox, Christopher Oak. And as Henry Blofeld pulled stumps on Test Match Special, he's just in time for Wimbledon. We test how he'd fare in the tennis as we play one sport to the tune of another. Federer down the line on the forehand, Murray gets it back. Federer return, Federer going across court, tries to drop short, Murray there to volley. And in Bob Murray wins with an extraordinary log, um, an extraordinary, I mean, it was a sort of stop volley, really. Some residents who were forced to leave their homes as the fire raged have now chosen to return. As well as having to live with the ruins of Grenfell Tower on their doorstep, they have been left with no hot water. Kensington and Chelsea Council says it will not collect rent from tenants of the three blocks until next January at the earliest. Any payments will be taken. Sustainable fisheries by properly monitoring what happens at sea. Fish themselves don't respect lines on a map. They just sport of them in concealed compartments of big lorries to the notorious criminal gangs in Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo. His net worth ought to provide a footprint to Europe and the United States. Power companies in Central America are trying to restore services after a blackout affected several countries. Costa Rica was left without electricity for five hours. Power was also lost in parts of Guatemala, Nicaragua and El Salvador. This is BH on BBC Radio 4. In just a few minutes, take our first...
long before any music was played, this radio bird song became a soul away success. Our own Sunday slow radio moment is basically pinched from the pioneering station engineer back then at Classic FM, Quentin Howard, who told me how it all started. 25. From the letters that I got and still get today. So it has this deep effect on people. And I think when you put the. I'm afraid I'm not. I knew you might say that. So do you want. I have to say, I didn't know this, and I apologise to all, all who, who do, but do you want to have. Don't look. It's a mechanical process which pumps oxygenated blood around the body. You're going to administer CPR if your casualty is not breathing. Okay, Madeline, Nika, Jacob. Are you listening? Here's Isabel Curl from St. John Ambulance. And our pupils here, if you can wait for just a moment, you won't hear this. The first thing you do is you ask them, are you choking? And hopefully they can either nod to you or they will shake their head. Because then you're going to say, look, can I help? And if they say yes, then you're going to leap into action and you're going to give them up to five back blows to clean their shoulders. If you can't, then bring water to them. Minimum for 10 minutes or as long as it's still hurting. While cooling, if you can, remove any jewellery or constricting items or clothing. As long as it doesn't cause any further damage. Madeline, we haven't heard from you as much as everyone else. I've received a nasty bone when you're bleeding. What do you do? Um, well, if it's like on their arm and the person doesn't know they've done it, what people should do is they should get a towel, wrap it around their arms, hold it up and then call them like the, and I'll call the ambulance. should respect the views of the pay review bodies. The UK is withdrawing from an agreement that allows boats from other countries to fish in British waters. The government, the government says it will end the agreement that allows other countries to fish in UK waters. The deal, the London Fisheries Convention, was signed in 1964 and also gives us reciprocal rights. Because this negotiates is not just about fishing rights. This is about access to markets, about access to people and about business thriving. So, so what's not the focus of, of, of what's really important here, which is communities working and growing the economy. Right, but if I'm hearing you right, this isn't so much about prawns, it's about pawns in the Brexit chest. The reserves are forced out of the Scottish waters as 
and about all the boats on the south west coast of Ireland fishing mackerel. And that's when the mackerel are spawning. I just wish we were in the same position to do it. Because the rest of Europe is really benefiting from, from the UK and Irish waters. Like there's a lot of UK that fishing in Irish waters as well, so it's but we're probably the only country in Europe that has something to offer the UK fishing industry, whereas the rest of the countries don't. So it's only really Ireland that's, that's right, but also shows, yeah, as we were saying, he's not doing the actual job of governing. Yeah. He's basically just getting on with Twitter and not filling the key posts to make government work. Some roles are being filled, but, but then you can see what he's trying to do and drain the swamp, as he called it, before he began the game. Um, Claire Fox, back to you. The Mail on Sunday front page and the uh, interview I think you've got in the papers with Tom Watson of Labour. Well, so first of all on the Mail on Sunday, this is... Uh, Tory chaos over tuition fees U-turn. This is an extraordinary story that's been kind of running for a couple of days. This idea that um, the Tories might make a dramatic U-turn on university tuition fees in order to apparently woo back uh, young voters. And on the inside, it says we must co uh, recast core beliefs, not just hug hoodies, according to Damien Green. Mm. Now, the reason why this is significant is that it, see, it seems to me that all the kind of political parties are kind of getting themselves into... ...tuning austerity in the face of austerity attacks by other parties including Labour. Yes, they are, and weirdly, after the election. <laughs> yeah, that, so, so why don't you do this before really election? You're going to chuck bribes at people, do it before election when it matters. So no Times a great, great piece uh, about how... Um, Cabinet Ministers lead, lead austerity revolt. They've got interviewed Michael Gove, him signaling there should be a pay rise for public bodies. The Observer page one says Jeremy Hunt and Justin Greening also want it. So, so what's weird is after the election we're finally coming out with let, 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 let's lift, lift the pay, back, the pay uh, limit. Um, and back to what Claire was saying, I thought it was quite patronising um, to use the phrase hug hoodies. And I think if you're trying to win back the youth, probably don't label them as hoodies. Um, but it is quite an effective Telegraph, thing to you've say. picked another Sunday to pick your coverage. What, what is it, uh, what paper, and what's it say? It's in the Sunday Mirror, page 15. It talk, it's a great read about Barry Norman. A lot of us grew up watching uh, film, what, 87, 88, 89, carrying on until he retired. Um, but it does make clear here that he also had a, a sideline in Pickled Onions. So the, the um, Mirror <laughs> says that, uh, and Stephen, Cry, Stephen Fry tweeted to him saying, Sad to hear of Barry Norman's departure. A film critic and provider of fine pickled onions. That's a good life. And he started a, a recipe, in, uh, a, a jump, Sonny Jars in, 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 in yeah. the 20th Barry Norman appeared here very much. We're very glad that you, you paid tribute to him. Uh, he, com he compared the story in Star Wars to the Sagala had uh, legends. Uh, so I think it's time, Amy Hogger, for you, mm. to change the subject. Old timers rediscover the mm. high life on, on this uh, mini bus and taken to see how it's grown and learn about it in lectures, a seminar over sandwiches, um, and then they can buy it. And, the, and it was just lovely. It's talking about the baby boomer generation who dappled um, when they, uh, during the 70s and are now reconnecting and they've got some of them have health problems that, that um, cannabis is helping with, but it ends, it really made me laugh. One angry daughter said um, that they were encouraging marijuana use. Her mother told her to butt out. Mm -hmm. um, is, are you, where's the telegraph on this? Are you in favour of cannabis use for readers? <laughs> Well, You're saying I, you've I, got to just say no policy, and it's coming up. <laughs> I've really got it. Uh, to you now, uh, in the closing minutes, Christopher Hope, mm -hmm. uh, more politics, more remain. Do you believe that? Most, most young people were remain, but you know, first of all, like, people are entitled to disagree, and I'm entitled to argue back. One thing that I do think is is that people, things shouldn't be a fashion. I mean, I think that culturally, it became fashionable for the young to be remain. And as a lefty Brexiteer, we should mix it up a bit and realise that you can't put people in easy boxes like that. I just think the leadership, um, all, all of that kind of debate and all the gossip is just a distraction, really, and it's a bit more entertaining than the serious issues that kind of said we should be talking about and the Tory party is having fun with it. Um, I'm going to give you the final word, Amy. It's your first appearance here because you're going to cheer us up with the news in the Sunday Times of self-cleaning kitchens. What is this? What um, is this stuff? So scientists have come up with the ultimate dream kitchen, uh, one which is capable of self-cleaning and destroying bacteria without a hint of soap or sprays. And I was initially reluctant to um, talk about this story just because I don't want to be a woman on the radio merely talking about cleaning, <laughs> but I've inherited my disgusting messiness from my father, so I feel like that validates it. And this just sounds great.
it's from researchers at um, UCL, University College of London. And it sounds a great future ahead for all of us. Yeah, I entirely agree. I mean, I think it these sounds are fantastic. Yes, please. Being a woman talking about cleaning when you say I don't want to do any of it and science can do it for me is the perfect way to be a modern woman today. <laughs> Nobody should ever clean. Um, if I can just say that you, you kindly mentioned um, Simon Poggett, your dad, so I didn't mention that at the beginning, but oh, shown right. here among yeah. many of you with Viv Richards. It's a lovely picture to see. Viv Richards was a genius and, and very few of us are lucky enough to have genius. As you're talking to me, you're making a little chipping motion as if you're almost as if you're playing golf when you're talking.
yesterday of Henry Blofeld, one of the most familiar and best-loved cricket commentators since the radio was the wireless and Richie Benno, captain of Australia. Blowers grew up on his family's estate in Norfolk, was captain of the Eton First Eleven, played first-class cricket at Cambridge University, scoring centuries at Lords for both, until an accident on his bicycle obliged him to give up playing as a career and eventually take to journalism. He's been on Test Match Special since 1972, Blowers to Brian Johnston's Johnners, but after 45 years retires, not to disappear, but reappear in the four-part Baby Boomer's Guide to Growing Old on More 4. And Blowers, I suppose it's that distinctive combination on Test Match Special of elegant English and base humour that has become so much loved by listeners everywhere. Well, it, it's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, I came, I came to it, I remember, in 1972, and the, 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 the programme, really, was, was run by John Arliffe and Brian Johnston, and it was, and it was Jonas who produced the humour. And, of course, as you say, Jonas, Jonas loved at Oxford in the 30s, and everyone... And, I mean, John, honest. every day's um, test cricket he did, lunch, was two bottles of claret, in a, of a very good year. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in that lovely voice of his. And he was amazing. He knew when to stop. He didn't really, I mean... But the, the extraordinary thing was, that having had his two bottles of lunch, he was always an immeasurably better commentator after lunch than before. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a kind of, perhaps, a, a relaxation about... About things in those in that era, perhaps it's rather gone from now, where everyone seems to be so hyper alert and, and rather anxious about getting everything right. There was a sort of relaxed atmosphere. Which I, was about to. Well, this was so, and I can always remember about that midday. You heard <laughs> with a noise in the back of the box, and Peter Baxter used to throw his hands in the air, and rather horrified. But Trevor Bailey always neutralised the situation wherever he was by saying in a loud voice, "Ah, the medicine." <laughs> <laughs> and that, 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 that justified it. But we did, I mean, we we're did in those days. We were very lucky to have Henry, because you were destined for a, a very um, glorious cricketing career yourself until this unfortunate accident when you were, uh, well, I'm not sure if you were hit by a bus or if you hit the bus on your bicycle. Well, it was, it was sort of 50-50, really. I know I hit it. Um, I was bicycling over a small, a small mm -hmm. over, over a bridge and then across a small You've been road. been around with spectacular cricket being played and some spectacular cricketer. Yes, I, th I think I have. I mean, I think also I've seen a fair amount of, of, of dull cricket. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean it, it's sort I of... I think I'm bad in the 90s, so I, I can wrong with an old I always think. Um, you're also, I know, doing an appeal for Radio 4 for Macular Degeneration because your sight isn't what it was. Mm. And that, of course, must make... I mean, it's because I will answer the back to the generation, it's the kind of centre field of vision is, becomes indistinct, and you can see what's on the outside. Of the well, I've got back to generation one eye, but not the other. The other is 2020, and, and, which is lucky, but the trouble is the one with it is my master eye. Um, so, I mean, it, when I look at you with both eyes, you look beautiful. When I look at you with my <laughs> left eye, you look sensational. <laughs> this is absolutely my favourite moment in radio I've ever, ever, ever experienced. Um, you've seen some wonderful things. And, and bearing in mind, he was a, a great hero of mine growing up. Um, and I, you know, I, I sort of met him and, it, and uh, we went out for this very long lunch. And, uh, and it was just me and, me and Beefy standing by the end of it. Which was, which was great, um, and we ended up in his hotel room, and uh, you know, you know, um, 